on the streets, my brother's dying. And I hear the mothers crying, crying out. And the way that things are going. So our GMO safe to eat, and then what happens when you exceed current safety requirements? So this morning I talked particularly about the industry sorts of studies. I pointed out that um, if they do an animal study, then they tend not to use terribly many animals. So it becomes very hard to find any adverse effects because it's very hard to find them statistically. And you'll see that... Um, I'll just point to the next one. So what I'm talking about is a uh, study that we did in the United States, in fact in Iowa in the United States. And in this one, it's, uh, remember I said in the previous, uh, in the talk this morning, how um, the studies are not done for long enough to find adverse effects. The traditional uh, industry studies are not done for long enough. Yeah. Here we're talking about a long-term toxicology study. So this is a five months or six for a long time, for quite a few years. And he's saying, look, we're seeing things in these pigs. We're seeing reproductive problems. And particularly that the sows seem to have a reduced ability to conceive and higher rates of miscarriage uh, in those pigs fed GMOs compared to pigs fed non-GMOs. And in the boys, in the boars, um, we're seeing a reduction of piglets born if the boars used uh, if boars are used instead of artificial insemination, because there's a lot of artificial insemination used in the US. Um, because artificial insemination guarantees a certain number of viable sperm. And if you don't have that guarantee, then they're finding issues in male reproduction in pigs. They're also seeing digestive problems, particularly inflammation in the stomach or the small intestine, and increasing ulcers, he was saying. And the a thin intestinal wall, um, where the pigs were going, uh, getting what's called hemorrhagic bowel disease, where a pig can rapidly bleed out, go down, literally go down in a screaming heap and die very quickly because the bowel has gotten so thin that they bleed out. Um, and he said, look, the problems seem to go away when you feed the pigs non-GMO feed, and they seem to come back when you feed them GMO feed. And he wanted to investigate this further, so I went, okay, that sounds like a good idea. So we then went and did a study on pigs. So we used traditional pigs, this is a commercial piggery study, right, so we're using standard commercial pigs as you would get into in the United States. We got them just weaned, so we could see if there were any effects at the very early stages. If you start doing studies on older animals, it's harder to find effects. You want to get them as weaned, as early as weaned as possible, close to weaning as possible. And a lot of the industry studies don't do that either. They get older animals. Now, we don't know what might happen with uh, the boy pigs, because the males are used to three days of age, and that's to stop what's called boar taint occurring in the meat. So we don't know what's happening with the male's uh, reproductive system. Now, we've got a nice number of animals per group now. Not 10, not 20, but we've got 84 pigs per group. So we can now find things statistically. Equal numbers of uh, males and females, we can identify each animal and follow them through the entire process. The pigs were monitored daily for all sorts of things and they were recorded. And so these are the pigs in the early phase of their life when they've just been randomised and they are all in separate pens. Then the pigs get bigger and this is what the pigs were looking like uh, later on in life, uh, at the, uh, just before they were actually uh, killed. Now the feed we used, as I said, it was a mixture of GM soy and corn, normal in the US pig industry. Half the pigs were fed a GM diet and that was three GM genes all together. So that's the Roundup Ready gene, so uh, the, uh, uh, the crop has been designed to be resistant to a herbicide, glyphosate. And then we've, in the corn, we've also got Monate 63 and Monate 10, and these are just code names for they uh, produce their own insecticides. One against a particular grub that eats the roots of the corn, and another against uh, a grub that, or beef that eats the uh, stems of the corn. Half were fed, uh, so there was a non GM fed group, and they were fed uh, a non GM crop grown from the same area. Now, ideally, you'd like an isogenic control, which means that it's the original corn variety that you genetically modified, but you can't get that. Particularly when you've got, uh, we had a triple, what's called a triple stack corn in there, and there is no isogenic control for a triple stack corn. So we did the next best thing, we got um, corn grown in the local area, and 
the other thing we did was that we processed those corn in exactly the same way, so there was no difference in the way they were treated when they were put in the dye, the same grind size, we measured mycotoxins, there were no mycotoxins there of any, any real um, import, they were well below USA and EU limits, um, and so on. So we made sure that things were as thoroughly done as possible. Then the pigs ate, and they ate and ate and ate until it was time for them to go to the abattoir, uh, the slaughterhouse, at the usual time that pigs do in the commercial production in the USA. So they went to the abattoir and we got the organs. The meat went into the US food supply and people ate that, as happens in the US. And this time we not only weighed the internal organs, as the industry uh, can, tends to do, but we went further. We actually cut the things open and looked inside, which the industry does not tend to do. And we particularly looked at kidneys, heart, lungs and stomach. And the veterinarians were blinded. So these are the people, these are trained veterinarians, lots of experience in pigs, and they did not know which pig they were looking at, whether that pig was fed a GM diet or a non-GM diet. So they were completely unbiased. And this does not happen in the industry studies either. So this is inside the abattoir. This is what it looks like inside an abattoir in the middle of Iowa. Um, all the pigs going through, and it was the digestive, it was this bit in the tray that we were interested in. Certainly we measured body weights and stuff for the pigs as they were growing, but th that's what we were interested in down there. So, you know, kidneys, we cut them open. And this is the lungs in a pig. And you can see that he's cutting through the, the lungs to look in, at the inside of the lungs to see if there's any issues there such as pneumonia. So what did we find? Well, the body weights were the same between the GM and the non-GM. There were lots of things that were the same. On the superficial things that the GM industry does, comparing a GM fed group to a non GM fed group, there was no difference. But when we looked deeper, that's when we found the differences. And this was one of the differences. The uterus weight was 25% higher in pigs fed the GM crop. And that was statistically significant. That's what that p value means. It's statistically significant. So what could be causing this? Well, we don't know. There are a whole lot of technical words that I could use to describe the potential pathologies that the uterine might have. Um, but, you know, it's other work has said that uh, GM soy-fed rats had a statistically significant increase in the density of the uterine areas of the uterus. Maybe that's what's happening here. We don't quite know. But certainly there was this difference in the reproductive um, organ of the female pigs. Now the other thing was the inflammation that we were interested in. Remember how I was saying we're seeing reproductive problems and we're seeing uh, problems in the digestive tract of the pigs. With stomach inflammation, uh, in a, we, we got some uh, stomachs from pigs that were not in our study, uh, just went to the abattoir, got some stomachs, and uh, the veterinarians just, uh, determined a scaling system based on what they could see in the stomachs in the pigs coming through. And this is what they determined. So there's uh, the veterinarian looking at the stomach of the pig. And you can see he's turning all over all those little folds of the veg, to look for ulcers and so on. He's doing a very thorough job there. And that's me recording what he's, what he's saying to me. So this is a non-inflamed stomach. So the stomach looks like this. And we cut open around the edge to go like this. So what you're seeing there is that's the tube, the esophagus, that the food comes down into the stomach, and this is the surface of the stomach. And you can see the sort of light beige colour. That's a no inflamed stomach. That is a mild inflamed stomach. You can see the red coming up here. That's a moderately inflamed stomach, more red. And that is a severely inflamed stomach, and that is not something that I would want to have. So to have it severely inflamed, you really need to have almost all of this area bright red in colour. So what did we find? We found that um, the rate of severe stomach inflammation compared to non-GM fed pigs, overall it was over twice as, time, twice as likely to occur in a pig fed at the GM diet. And that means it's statistically significant. In males, it was four times more likely, once again statistically significant, and in females, it was 2.2 times more likely, statistically significant. So what do we think could be causing this? 
Well, we think that it's probably those insecticidal proteins that the GM crop was designed to make. Remember, that was a triple stack corn. And in that triple stack corn, there were two what's called BT proteins. These are proteins that have been genetically engineered so that the crop, the corn, will make those things so that when the grub eats the corn, the grub will eat that protein in, it will go into the digestive system of the grub, it will rupture the gut of the grub, and the grub will die. Now, the industry says that there is no problem with this, uh, that it's not going to affect you and I because, well, we don't have the environment in our stomach for those proteins to work properly. We don't have the receptors for it, so everything's fine. But it hasn't actually been checked terribly well. So we think that this is what's actually causing it, that the BT proteins are actually causing this problem in the stomach, irritating the stomach. And um, there were two in there. And the question is basically, you know, <coughs> Are they acting synergistically? Because you've got two in there at once. Maybe that's what's happening. Now, we also took some blood from the pigs just before they were killed, a couple of days before, and measured a lot of things in the blood. Now, it's important to note that there was no difference between the GM and the non-GM fed pigs. Now, that may look good on the outset. However, it also means that the things we saw in the stomachs and the things we saw in the uteri were not being picked up by the biochemistry. So if an industry does a biochemistry test on some pigs and go, oh, everything's fine, there's nothing, there's no difference between the two groups, it may not mean much. Because things that affect the uterus are not usually things that you measure in the blood. Things that affect inflammation, that cause inflammation, that are associated with inflammation, are not usually the things that you measure in a standard biochemistry test. So the conclusion of this is that a mixed GM soy and GM maize diet cause stomach and uterine pathologies, and to remind you that humans have a similar digestive system to pigs, which is why we did it in pigs. So this was a properly controlled study, as I said, with animals physiologically similar to humans, fed over a long period of time, large sample sizes, we can actually find differences if there are those there. Um, we uh, control for a lot of confounders that might creep in that the industry doesn't control for. And basically, I would say, because we went looking more thoroughly than the industry studies do, that's why we found actual issues. So thank you very much. Um, now, uh, you can find this study and others at that website, gmogdcarmel.org. Um, please be uh, reminded that that's not my personal website. That's actually a fan site. Um, so you can't contact me through that. Other people run that site. And, um, but, you know, they're, they're good about allowing me to put things actually on the site. And that's my email address. And thank you very much. I'm going to hand over to Irene now, who then will continue on uh, with a rat study uh, so we've done a pig study and we've done a rat study. The rat study is done after this one and she will be looking uh, at tissues of the digestive system under a microscope and we'll tell you about that. And she'll also tell you about what's so different about the BT proteins when they're made by a GM crop compared to if you just spray bacillus thuringiensis on an organic crop. They're quite different and Irene will tell you what the difference is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy.